Donnie Jones live. I am certified arborist Donnie the Tree Lady hanging oh, out with Marty McFly. You just gave a whole new like title and everything. You're a certified arborist. I am arborist a certified and... arborist. How do you get certified being an arborist? Well, be- because an arborist is someone that loves and take care of, take care of trees. But a certified arborist is somebody that is certified to do so by the International Society of Arbor Culture. And I have one of my customers actually two days ago that was like, Donnie, why don't you tell people you're a certified arborist? That's one of the main reasons why I like having you take care of my trees is because you're a certified arborist. So I said, okay, fine. I'm going to own my stuff. You know what? You might as well because I got a few people in my neighborhood that are certified. Where they, I just say they're really <laughs> good with trees. Okay. You know, and they know all the like... Uh, uh, Stahiva, what is Stavia? it? Stavia, you know, what? Yeah, yeah, you know, the, 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 they say this kind is good for the head. Some kind, some what of this. What kind of tree are you talking about? Yeah, the body, you know, the, well, we're talking you know about what? that a little I'm bit later on. I'm not messing wrong. with you. You're I'm going saying, to, but they certify. Okay, that ain't the kind of trees I'm <laughs> Look, talking about. I'm talking about the things that grow out of the ground. They grow out of the ground. Okay, well, I'm talking pot. about the trees that you plant. They plant in your, them your, too. Okay, I'm talking about the things <laughs> that, that you sit up under to get shade and to... They, they, you know, Make sometimes you feel have, shady sometimes. Oh, my goodness. Like, but anyway. I'm done with you, man. <laughs> How was your weekend, dude? You know what? My weekend was great. I finally, finally got a chance to see uh, the end games. The movie oh, and everything. Dude, what I yes. know, I was happy about dude, that. Yeah, it's so, so good. I, you know, because so for the people that haven't seen, I don't want to do any spoilers. We ain't gonna I'm do gonna no say, spoilers. I'm gonna just say it was good, dude. It was off the chain. I, I liked it. So. You know what? Let me tell you something. I okay. You know, I'm, I, I'm a mommy. Uh-huh. Okay, so being a mommy, I put my daughter on punish because she did something that frustrated me. And I said, we ain't doing nothing this weekend. We're going to do da 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 And then online, I went on Facebook to post some stuff about, you know, our show and what we're doing and everything. Mm-hmm. And I kept seeing, you know, these these little posts about end games. I was like, oh, I want to go see it. I want to go see it. And I was like, I can't go see it by myself without my babies. So... I took her off punishment and, you know, uh, we, we yeah. all went to go see end games. Uh, so, you know, I had, cool. I'm, I'm the worst mom in the world, man. What? My no. kids know they can, they'd be, I feel like they go three, two, one, we're off punishment. Cause I put them on punishment and then I find a and reason to take, take them, them off, off real quick. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I, Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. You know, I, I don't have kids, so I can't judge them. We, we, so, you know what? Anyway, that's, that's a topic for another show. Know, that's a topic for another show. Yeah, 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 but you yeah. know what? We've got a great show. We've got yes. an amazing show. We are actually going to be talking about one of my favorite things, and that's uh, people and good food. And we yes. have a gentleman that actually made my day last year. Okay. okay. And I still talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I turned a big 5-0 last year and I had an amazing party at my mm-hmm. house. Well, my thing was that I wanted to make sure I had exceptional food because anybody that knows me knows that when it comes to food, I'm like, I know all the good yeah. restaurants. Mm-hmm. I know all the good places to go. But I wanted to make it kind of a, a, a family-friendly event and have it at my home. And so I had it catered. Not only did I get a caterer, I literally believe I got the best caterer or one of the best caterers in Atlanta. This man understands food. He understands preparation. He understands class. He understands how to create a product that you put in your body that will create a feeling that will last forever. I mean, the man is just absolutely amazing. And his food is beautiful. That's the other thing. It was visually appealing, but it was also very, very tasteful. Because, okay. you know, a lot of times you can go to the fancy restaurants and it looks good, but you'd be like, well, this stuff it's ain't bland. Like bland, it's right. Yet, yeah. His stuff got flavor and everything. And by the way, I was blessed to run into him a little while ago. And I was like, man, you got to come on my show and talk about what you're doing. And so I am honored to have a man that has, that is so good at his craft. Okay. Well, that's you, amazing well, you at introduce what he's doing. I ain't going to introduce him. I'm going to introduce him the way, him I'm gonna introduce him the way I want to introduce him. <laughs> I'm talking about Mr. Jermel Calvin. Yeah. With right on catering. Right on time yeah. catering. Good afternoon. Good yes. afternoon. I like to awesome. thank you, Donnie, for that warm welcome. Thank you. Greeting. You know. I wanted to give you a warm welcome. He was trying to cut me off. It's all good. You know, I really feel like you talked to me. I don't know if I'm that amazing. I'm saying but the first five minutes was great. Definitely. You know, just, I'm just saying it was just the last five. I was like, okay, okay, let's get into it. But I it. certainly appreciate it. And I well, thank, thank you all you. for having me. Well, afternoon. thank you for doing thank what you yeah. did. We still talk about the food to this day. Thank you. And that party was last year. So I want to thank you thank for you. what you do. Thank you. Uh-huh. You know, and I'm saying what you're doing in the community, but you got to tell the people about yourself so they know who I'm talking about. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jarmel Calvin, as Danny has stated, and I'm the owner of Right on Time Catering, located out of Smyrna, Georgia, here in the metro Atlanta area. Yeah. And I provide a 
pretty good what I like to believe. Catering service to <laughs> my people in the experience. community. Um, where I offer catering, I offer an in-home um, personal chefing, as well as preparing meals for those who are looking for meal prep options. Yes. So anything within the food service industry that you're looking for, you can come to me for some healthy options. You can come from come to me for, you know, just if you're looking to be, you know, just indulge for a little yeah. time or whatever. Anything. Or for a party. For a party. Yeah. Wedding. But um, you do big events also. Mitzvah, yeah. Big events, anything. I'm your man. Just hit me up. So, I love it. And how do they hit you up? Just, you can hit me up by contacting me at 706-296-6572. That's my cell phone number. And also via email at rightontime.ga at gmail.com. Again, that's rightontime.ga at gmail.com. Don't awesome. hesitate to hit me up. That's what's up. Now, do you have a, do you have a, a location like a, a restaurant storefront or anywhere that they can just come and not stop a, in for, like, for lunch or something? Not a storefront as of yet. But eventually that will come. Everyone's been asking me about it. And, you know, I'm just going to speak it into existence. I, I believe love it. strongly in speaking things into existence. That's one of my goals to one day have a booming restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Right now, I just say one location. It may spread, you know, to several locations. Maybe you're going to be international, dude. Right. Thank right. you. Right. That's what right. I'm talking. Speak it into now, existence. Speak now, it into let existence. Let me ask you, Dan, do you cater to, like, when, when you cater an event, do you ask the people, you know, the, the clients, you know, what kind of food do you? kind of ideally want and is there anything like you stay away from sure i always i think it's important to get to know the customer right. and ask the customer first what they like before you just make any assumptions so um i i, I typically typically go about it by asking them first what they okay. like and some things that they're interested in right some of their favorite dishes and often, a lot of people, you know, they'll just tell me, mm, I don't know, you know, you can just freestyle or you right. give me some suggestions. And I love taking that route as well, you know. Now, have you ever shocked anybody, like, had some, like, fried chitlins or something like that? You know what? <laughs> you I'm know? done with you. I know, no, I'm just saying. Because, like he said, well, just, they'll say, you know, Does just he feel free. Like, we got to talk about this real quick. He saying, doesn't even look you know, like he eats chitlins. I, it, it doesn't matter. He just he might, I don't know. It. You know, he could just yeah, serve, serve it. it. Right, right. right. But I'm saying that's what they say, you know, feel free, surprise us. Right. That'll be a surprise, you know, and they might not even know what it but is. But for me, it? that would be a horrible surprise because, you know, I don't eat hmm. pork. So, but I don't you know. eat pork either. Yeah, I don't I mess with that. Yeah. But if you didn't check that box, you know, he's like, well, what do you don't, you know, eat? Because I, I, I'm assuming that you do ask, you know, what is it that you don't want? Right. Or, you know, exactly. Because, you, you know, some people have allergens to right. weed or shellfish. Yeah. but Some Nuts and stuff like know. that. When yeah. I. I'll definitely keep that in mind when I, except for you, Donnie, you don't eat pork. When I do, you know, come back again for invite. I'll bring, you know, some fried chitlins. Please do. Uh -huh. No, you ain't bringing no fried chitlins up in here. <laughs> you know, you can bring fried chitlins for, no, for uh, no. Marty. <laughs> no, I will pass know. on that. But it's, it's a thing to know. You know, I'm just it like, is a thing. Now, to know. what got you into this though? Interesting. So. What me, what got me into cooking was, and I actually. I think we need to, I think we, why don't we come yeah. back and talk about that? Because I okay. want to really get into your story because you do have okay. an amazing story. And I want the people to get a chance to hear it. Sure. Um, you're listening to Donnie Jones Live. I am Donnie the Tree Lady, certified arborist. Yeah, and I'm Marty Ringer, certified person. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you silly dude. And we'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Donnie Joe's Live. I am certified arborist Donnie the Tree Lady. And I am Marty McFly, that guy. Yeah, and we are sitting here with Jarmel Calvin of Right On Time Catering. My man, y'all, like I said, if y'all need a party or anything done, y'all got to talk to this man because he made my 50th off the chain. Most definitely. Before we went to break, you were getting ready to talk a little bit about how you got into doing what you're doing. And the reason why I'm interested in it is because you're around food all the time, but yeah. you... you you lean and fit. How do you do that? Great question. But um, I'm going to hold that thought, but you tell us how, to, how you okay. got us out. So it's, it's real funny because my uncle, the other day I was at my aunt and uncle's house, and he was like, um, hey, man, you know, all the great chefs got the pot belly, and, you know, they it, just fat. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And so I've told myself, you know what, I'm taking a stand, and I'm going to be the anomaly. I love it. I love so, it. So, you know, I I wake up some days. 
seven o'clock in the morning and I just go to the gym. And that's one thing about me. Like I've always been able just to, I should have ran cross country in high school, I think, but I've always just been able to run long distances. So really, it's nothing for me to go outside or indoor on a treadmill and just run three or four miles. With no big deal. No big deal. Okay. I'm training for the, um, the uh, Peachtree Road Race. Yes. And I'm struggling at two miles, man. I'm you know what? You. And it's, at six miles, we gotta go. It's just, oh, wow. But see, I'm sure. I'm sure it's some time out. And I know you're gonna pace yourself to eventually am. work yourself up to where you can do that. I have to because so, on July you know, 4th, I don't have a choice. Just you know, just measure and track. You know your goal. Yeah. And before you know it, you'll be there. So. Thank you. I appreciated that. But let's get into your story. How did you get into right? Cooking? How did okay. you get it? Because a lot of brothers don't. Just grow up and say, I want to be a cook or a chef or, you know, culinary skills. Right. Not normally. Right. Yeah. Right. So, now how did, yeah. So, okay. Um, so, I'm from rural Georgia, Thompson, Georgia. Shout out to Thompson, Georgia. Shout out Thompson, to Thompson, Georgia's in the house. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, growing up, I lived with my grandma and my granddad for a portion of my life when I was younger. And, you know, I just always remember my grandma really cooking like some really good food. Right. And I would be in the kitchen, and I would just always be, you know, lifting up pots and trying to sneak and taste something. So she just eventually got aggravated with it, and she told me, you know, if you're going to be in the kitchen, then you're going to start helping out. And so I was like, okay, cool. And I always just saw that as a way, you know, if I'm in the kitchen helping out, I can, like, beat everybody to trying out the food. Ah, so like, sit I me love off it. The plate to the side. Mm-hmm. I love it. And the interest just, you know, really went from there. And... I remember my first job in high school was working at a grocery store and I would assist in the uh, deli bakery and assist in the um, meat department of the Mm -hmm. store. And so just from seeing the way that different meats were cut and seeing how they were prepared, seeing how stuff was prepared in the deli bakery, I just was always fascinated in it, you know? And I was like, this is something that I can enjoy doing because Mm -hmm. Even as a kid, I would no- I would notice. I would have toys. I would, like, I know, I always got whoopings for it. But I would get a toy, and the next day mm-hmm. it was just torn up. Uh-huh. Or anything that, you know, was given to me, I always had to find a way to alter it and make okay. it better. Uh, so and you started doing that with food. I started doing that with food. And okay. I found myself, I'll go to a restaurant. If it's bland, I'll be like, cool. Let me just sit this right here. When we get home, we're going to doctor this up and fix it. Okay, yeah. okay. So... You know, working at the grocery store, I just, I would spend my check and just buy food. I know it's weird. Like, That's not weird, but, you, but you, <laughs> you were starting to find yourself. But at what point did you go, yep. I'm going to do this for a living? Like, I'm going to take my time. Because you went to culinary school, didn't no, you? I no, I didn't. I thought you did. I didn't. Okay. Well, then how did you learn to make all that pretty stuff and all the artsy thing you did at my birthday with the food? How you did know, you learn to do that? Just a, just a, just a lot of practice. You know, I always heard. You watch YouTube videos, man. I watch no, YouTube. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Go ahead. I watch YouTube. Um, as a kid, I used to watch Emerald Live. I read a lot of yeah. culinary books. So yeah. I'm always just practicing. You know, I, I heard this saying the other day, and it said, um, people are rewarded in public for what they spend years practicing in mm, private. So I'm right. really just trying to take that quote and just live by it, you know? So that's... That's how I go about it. That's how I'm able to make things look But that means that you have a natural gift for it because not everybody can do that. You know, I put stuff on the table sometimes and my kids be like, Daddy, can you cook? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And that was how, like, my mom, she would tell me. And I can cook. It's just my kids picky. Go ahead. My mom, she would tell me that. She would be like, you know, I would sometimes I'd be like, hmm. And I'm a pass. She'd be like, well, you know, if you like, if you want something that you really like, you know, right. you can always go cook it. And I'll be like, you know, I will go cook it. Okay. And so well, I what's your it. favorite thing to cook? Because that's what we're here to talk about is that what you do at Right on Time Catering. I love entrepreneurs and I love entrepreneurship. And I know in the next segment, we'll talk about entrepreneurship sure. and what you're doing to grow your business and sure. see if there's any little things that I could help you with. Sure. But right now, we're here to talk about you and, and, and your food in this segment. My favorite thing to cook Probably would be any Spanish dishes. Oh, yeah. I think I'm yeah. really addicted to Spanish food. I, now, did you have Spanish influences or just from? I don't, you know. Um, I just always liked tacos, so now. You didn't make no taco stuff for me. 
You know, I didn't know if you <laughs> You know, I, I'm always trying to get, That's true. That wasn't right. on the menu. That wasn't there, right. So, you know, I really like Spanish food. Um, and out in Smyrna, there's a lot of Spanish influence. You know, okay. a huge Spanish culture. So right. I started going to the restaurants there and um, eating. You like, weren't taking their recipes, man, was you? You know, <laughs> no, that's exactly what I did. Okay, it's um, it's a it's a taco restaurant out in Smyrna, um, and I actually go there all the time. And I asked one of the guys, "Hey, yeah, how are you all making this carne asada?" And he just told me before I stopped eating meat. That was actually one of my favorite things was carne asada. And then my brother in law is from El Salvador, and so every time we had a big you know, family get together, oh, we would wow. make car carne asada. So, yeah. So, you got to find a way. I, how can I eat carne asada or something like carne asada? What is That's carne not asada? me. Carne, it's like, um, you you explain carne it. Carne asada is steak with um, a, a number of different Spanish seasons on yeah. it. Uh, some add paprika, smoked paprika, cumin. Lime. Okay, you just it's give up. Because so I'm getting <laughs> like I mean? poke asana and poke asana. <laughs> no, it's steak. carne asana. Okay. Okay. Carne asana. Dude. I know. And it's like some it's skirt steak. Right. Okay. Right. Steak. It's really good. So okay. what if, but on, with your catering business, right on time catering, what is it you're known for? Like, what do people go, wow, Calvin, that's what you're known for? That's a difficult question because I, I cook so much and people, you know, different people ask for different things. Yeah. I guess... And I say this humbly, I guess I would just really be known for providing good food. Yeah. No matter what. Well, it that's is. how we met you. Um, Sierra, the lady that does all my parties, she was like, Donnie, you're gonna love this man. He goes, If you if if you have if you put it in your head, he can put it on your plate. Let me back up. If I had to say one thing, it would definitely be the lemon and dill salmon with the cream sauce. Oh. Oh. Okay, you gonna make some of that this evening? No, I'm just kidding. I can. I certainly can. <laughs> I certainly can. Now you said you do personal chef all uh, chef service too. How does that work? Yes. That works if you know I if um have clients who would like me to come into the home and cook for them, and you know just pay me for you know a designated time period. Then I'm certainly able to do that as well. You know, a lot of people just don't feel mm -hmm. like cooking. So if you're looking to hire a personal chef who can just prepare meals for you, then hey. I'm your guy. You know awesome. what? We might need to talk. You know, because I, I I do not like to cook. Well, Betty, I can't cook. But your wife cooks, though, right? <laughs> she ain't listening to this program. I'm gonna make sure of that. But well, I can yeah. definitely. Hey, that's why I'm here. I can definitely you say know, it today for you. have to work something out. You know. There the you payment, go. Then, yeah. There you go. I can just say it today for you. I love yeah. that. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and you said that that you got to tell me about this salmon because that is literally one of my favorites. To eat is salmon, okay. you know. Uh, what's your secret ingredient in the salmon? My secret ingredient in the salmon is the fresh dill. Okay. That's one thing I take very serious. Um, when I cook, I always make sure, and you can go on my page, I um, have several videos and okay. pictures where I show where I always use fresh quality ingredients. I think mm -hmm. that's really important. And it's just using fresh dill, um, oven-baked salmon, you know, really juicy. Some people tend to dry salmon. Okay, out why you got to be calling me out? Because that's what my daughter says. What am I doing wrong with my salmon? Because sometimes I cook it, it's on point, and it's still flaky and juicy. And other times, it's like a tire. You just throw it up against the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty so, much. What am I doing wrong? You're likely just over-baking it. Okay. Just over baking. Or you may just want to cover it when you do let it cook. I do cover it. Do? I put a little olive oil down. Yeah. Okay. And then I I, I, I turn the uh, salmon, you know, over and, you know, over so okay. that it has the little olive oil on both sides. I do a little sea salt, a little pepper, and sometimes I might do like a little lemon and garlic. Okay. And I drizzle a little honey across the top and then I, I cover it with foil and cook it. And then sometimes the flavor will be good, but it's like too skin, dry. Skin side down? Skin side down. Man. What? I don't know. What it, what? <laughs> because I sound good, I'm trying to it. figure out where you're going wrong. Like, <laughs> and it's about 15 minutes, right? It's about 15, 20. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. What am I doing wrong? Because my stuff is, so I'm serious. Sometimes it comes out really good, and then sometimes it comes out dry. And my kids call me out on it. Are you following the same steps every time? See, what I, what I, what I 
told myself I have to do when something comes out really good, I have to record how I did it, write it down. So See, then, I'm bad uh, with writing see? stuff down. That's, that's, I am. That's the key. That's the key. Okay, to write it down. Because I found it's very frustrating to have like a finished product come out really good. And so you good. tell yourself, I'm going to remember it. And then you want to cook it like two weeks later and you just forgot one or two steps. Well, maybe I'm missing so something. I don't know. But I can definitely help you out. How can I get in contact with you again? Yes. You can get in contact with me again at 706-296-6572 or at rightontime.ga at gmail.com. And I'm also on Instagram at yes. rightontime.ga. Again, that's rightontime.ga. Make sure y'all go follow me. It's I know, like right? a lot of great content. It's going to make you hungry. I promise you it will. I love it. I love it. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship because that was the other thing we want to talk about. But we will be right back. I'm Donnie the Tree Lady. And I'm Marty McFly. And we'll be right back. Yeah. Listen to Donnie Jones Live. I am certified arborist, Donnie the Tree Lady. And I am a non certified uh, <laughs> brother, I guess. <laughs> that's that's a lot to say, man. I don't know if I'm going to say right, that. No, 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 but everybody lot. keeps telling me I need to talk about that. You so, do, whatever. You do, you do. I'm saying because a lot of people don't, you know, they might forget that you were a tree lady. You exactly. Know, the I real am. Trees. A real tree. There right, you go. Right. Yeah, real tree. Yeah, lady. don't be creeping up on my car at 8 30 and 9 30 at nighttime. Hey, man, you know, no, I'm uh, talking about I cut down trees, trim trees, prune trees, whatever. But we are hitting, sitting here talking to Jermel Calvin from Right on Time Catering. And before we went to the right. break, um, we were talking about, what were we talking about? The favorite foods or? You, you know what? Some places where, like, where can we, get, well, we were talking about that off camera. Yeah, you know, that's about true. Oh, off camera, that's right. And, and, and some things that, you know, I wanted to make sure of. You are certified, right? Yeah. Because yes. you know, Georgia I remember we, we were talking about it earlier. You just said you didn't go to school. You just yes. well, now how do you just, just woke up one morning? Right. And I just want <laughs> no because I, I got a, I got a friend in 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 Riverdale who just decided he wanted to sell hot dogs. Okay. You know, and he found a barbecue grill that he could hook up to the back of the truck. Yeah. And he just started going around and started selling hot dogs. To people. Right. Right. I know that's illegal. I and think I know it that's, is. Yeah, I'm saying. Well, I think, but you, you've so got, you, but you've got all the licenses, business yes, licenses. I have my um, say, um, sort of safe certification, okay. you know, for cleanliness. Um, my LLC is certified through the Georgia Corporation Division. I have my EIN number and through the IRS. And you're, okay, that. you're getting too deep now. No. <laughs> We've been like, that, you need to know this. Are you insured? Like if, you, if somebody, if somebody <laughs> choking one of your chicken bones, are you insured for stuff yes, like that? Yes, I am insured. Okay, okay. that's awesome. But I'm destined on the CPR now, so. That's <laughs> We may have to wait for, you know, EMS to pull the up. M- exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. But the food tastes so good, you ain't going to choke on it. You'll be all right. But you were saying something funny about finding because you said your thing is uh, kind of a Spanish influence. Yes. And obviously you can come make it for them and make it good and stuff like yes. that. But you said something funny about ways to know that you're at a good, authentic place. You got to tell people, how, how do you know you're at a good, authentic place? So my man Sam sitting in front of me, he was asking me, you know, about my take, my opinion on this certain restaurant. And I told him, mm, you know, it's average. It'll do. And he asked me, you know, what was my favorite? You know, and I told him Los Tacos Villas in Smyrna. And I was telling him, you know, there's a, the, the differentiate, you know, the difference is one is Tex-Mex and one is really authentic street Mexican food. Mm-hmm. And so we got into this discussion right. on how do you know, what are the indicators? Yeah, how do you know, what's the indicator that this is an authentic, awesome place to eat, you know, Mexican? The first indicator is a packed parking lot. And, okay. you know, people, I generally like to gauge how people are acting. If people, if it's a packed parking lot, or people are acting like they're on edge to get inside. But people be like that in Chili's, though. I, I, and Chili's uh, ain't, you know. Uh, maybe in the maybe in the 90s or the <laughs> early 2000s. I ain't, I ain't seen nobody. Mm-hmm. I see tumbleweed in Chili's parking okay, lot now when well, I ride by. I'm showing my so, age. Uh-huh. You know, um, but, you know, you, when you go to, like, a really authentic place, you know, you may see a mosquito or two, you know. <laughs> People may be speaking, you know, broken English, but I promise you, that's some of the best. It's the best food. food. Okay. Mm-hmm. Some of the best food ever. Okay. The hard accent. You the hard understand. accent. But you know what? It's the same with soul foods because exactly. I mean, aside from this is it, which this is food. off the chain. This well, is off the chain. They they, they, they they good stuff. But um, but but like a lot of soul food places. You'd be scared to look at the rating, the health rating, but the stuff you know, is yeah. so good. You know, uh-huh. you know. Sometimes I just, you know. 
Ray Charles, <laughs> Stevie look. Wonder. Go, go, go with the flow. I don't want to. You know, go with the flow. If I, if, you know, I do a word of mouth. If people have went there for years and they've never gotten sick, you know, I'm just gonna say a quick Dude, prayer. Mm -hmm. I was in Decatur and I had my girls with me, and I wanted to take them to because I, even though I don't eat meat anymore, I still eat the sides and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I walk in the door, ready to eat my little black eyed peas, side of greens, just a little bit. Cause I, let me finish the story. Okay. That's why I okay. can't say where we're at. <laughs> but it, oh my god, it was so good. So I walk in there to order my food, and my girl stopped at the door. And I was like, "What are you doing?" They're like, "We can't eat here." I was like, "Why?" She goes, "Look." And so on the wall, it had like an eighty-one or a seventy-nine, and she's like, "We can't eat here. It's ninety. <laughs> it, it's below 90. I was like, "Are you serious?" So. Mm -hmm. I had to turn around because my kids would not eat serious? there. Are you yes, serious? They, did. they would not. No, no, eat you there. actually turned around because of that? because we were there to eat lunch. I and state they said they would not. Say, you know, no, no, you, girl, you better. Come you on. can't make them eat if they don't want to eat it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Would you make your kids eat something they didn't want to see, eat? Someplace they didn't want to eat? The way my mother raised us, yeah. Eat it away. You, you're right. I'm saying it's That's not like you had that. options. You know, it's like you are gonna eat this or you ain't gonna eat. You know, it's, okay. go to bed hungry. Well, right. Go to this bed is hungry. lunch. We're not talking dinner. We're talking about lunch. And? Well, y'all yeah. had lunch. <laughs> yeah, I told you, y'all, you had a bougie family. Yeah. yeah. This, everybody uh, had bougie. lunch, okay? Are you serious? Yes, I am. No, not everybody. Oh, no. You know what uh -huh. I mean. Okay, I know see, not man. everybody has lunch. I uh -huh. do know that. Yeah, I know see, there are well, starving people in the world. You, got, you had lunch. No, I did not. M Marty. What? I got bullied. Okay. <laughs> At school, I got bullied by a girl named Rashida, so I didn't have lunch. Okay, let's, let's get I into it. She was at like a six four. It sounds believable. Okay, it does. It, it really she does. She had a ponytail about Jermaine, a half an inch. I'm hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it was a struggle. It was right. Uh huh. Just, just that, we ain't gonna just get into get a none of what the rubber band around <laughs> it. Yep. That's a true story. Okay, Jermel. <laughs> we were, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh man, we I'm ran into tears. each other. <laughs> Obviously, you're an entrepreneur, you're a successful businessman, but one of the other things that I love to do is talk about entrepreneurship, okay. which I'm trying to make a segue. Um, what were some of the things that you're that are still a concern of you, even though you have a successful business? Some things that we could talk about that might help other people that are entrepreneurs. One of the things that's a concern of mine right now is how to scale a business. Mm -hmm. um, when you realize that you need to come up with a business model yeah. for scalability when you see that traffic is growing. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I still struggle with that. And I'm sure many other people who, mm -hmm. you know, don't have all the know-how mm -hmm. are still, you know, trying to wrap their mind about how to scale, how to know when to hire, how to hire, right. you know, help. Because you can't always trust people. People don't share the same passion for they what mean, you do. And that's why it's important that you get the right people, yes. you know. And I will say the one thing I have been blessed with is good people, you know. And we're still growing our business too, but yes. I know that coming from uh, from where you're at, I believe I could be of some value. Certainly. Um, uh, from, based on some of the things that we talked about. Do you have systems in place that you can teach other people how to duplicate what you're doing? Because if what you're doing is not duplicatable, it's going to be hard to scale it. You know, understand what I mean? Yes. So, do you have recipes in place? Do you have ways that you do things? How you set up when you go to a job? Like, are you able, like for example, with my company, I'm not there on the job site. My guys know exactly what to do, where to set the trucks, where to set up for the jobs, how to set the ropes and stuff like that. And they teach that to the next crew that come, that we bring on board. A methodology. A methodology okay. of doing things. So do, have you set, one of the first things I would do is set up a system of how you do things and document that system so that you can teach it to someone else. Another thing that I do feel like I'm still working on is making sure you have budgets in place, you know, making sure you're setting aside a certain percentage of your income for a rainy day, you know, so that you can scale your business. And then always working on yourself to become better at what you do and also connecting with other people in the industry because one of your things for scaling I'm just connected with another tree service um, or a gentleman that's actually just getting a tree service, but he's got contracts with the city. And so in order to scale my business, I'm working with other companies that are helping my company grow. And I'm in turn helping them grow also, even though it's still my guys doing it. Um, it's a way for me to get my foot in the door to grow my business. So you might want to connect with other caterers that have bigger jobs that you can start 
you know, connecting with and, and basically networking with them to scale your business or bring on people on a, cons- not because what's the other word? Contractor, a contractor mm-hmm. that also cooks or like another chef. So say you've got like, na- maybe you're not ready to ha- hire somebody full time, but there's somebody else that's a chef that, you know, will actually listen to what you say, do what you've done and can duplicate what you've done. So that when you get bigger orders or you get, go get a big event, and you want to grow your business, you can have them come on board when needed. And then as you do that, put some of those resources aside so that you can bring somebody on full time. That was some really helpful information. Like, <laughs> really, it was a lot to she consume. In, yeah. And so we're really yeah. going to, you know, have to, you yeah. know, pick back up on this. But yeah. Yeah. Do a good part two of that. Yeah. That certainly do a part two. Part two on that. You know, <laughs> we didn't even get time I, for another. Question, what were you going like, to say? I was going to just do a small one. Like, how do people contact you? I'm saying, like, promotion. Are you promoting mm-hmm. yourself? I'm saying, and how are you doing that? Certainly promoting myself um, right now through IG, uh, promote, promoting through flyers and things of um, that nature. Uh, just trying to push out a lot of digital content. And I'll be honest, I'm still learning from a marketing aspect mm-hmm. the best ways, um, you know, to drive, you know, notice and everything to the business. Right. So. Well, do you do breakfast? I do breakfast as well. Okay. Just breakfast, you didn't bring us no one. Breakfast, no. lunch, dinner, I want brunch. Lunch, brunch, hey. lunch, all brunch. of that. You there can you do it go. all, all, <laughs> Late all night snacks, anything. Or um, herbs. Well, once again, how do people get in contact with you? I know you just right. mentioned Instagram, but we always want to be keeping your name out there. You get in contact with me. Again, my phone number is 706-296-6572. My email is rightontime.ga at gmail.com. And my Instagram, which I check my DMs on Instagram several times a day, I'm at rightontime.ga. Check it out. Thank you. Yeah. Now, we were, no, I was going to say, Donnie, if they wanted to get in contact with you, how would they get in oh, contact yes. with you? You, have you can reach me at yes. DonnieJonesLive at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. That's, I'll spell that because there's so many different ways to spell Donnie. But it's D-O-N-I, Jones, J-O-N-E-S, live at gmail.com. You know, we're going to take a quick break and I'll start to wrap up. But I want to talk a little bit about some of your influences and what inspires you because I think that's kind of some good information to know. Once again, guys, you're listening to Donnie Jones Live. I am the certified arborist, Donnie the Tree Lady. And I am not the certified arborist, Marty McFly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be it. right back. Welcome back to Donnie Jones Live. I am certified arborist, Donnie the Tree Lady. And I am Marty McFly. That guy. Yeah, and we are <laughs> here with Jarmel Calvin with Right On Time Catering. Right. Dude. Dude. The first name. That's <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says that. Every time oh. I was a child. People say but you don't consider it two first names. No, you just consider it your name. name. Last name. Exactly. Oh, I ain't mad at you. You know, I, I wish people could get a chance to see. The, well, they do get a chance to see the behind the scenes stuff. We were just talking about when does avocado become guacamole why don't you answer that question and the was, world is waiting i was just telling sam <laughs> technically um avocado makes its transition to guacamole the minute it's smashed you know smashed wow. up and si- um smooth. so you don't have to put the the lime and stuff in there and the not tomatoes to make to. it avocado guacamole not if you don't want to i've been to restaurants and it was just plain you know Plain avocado. It's not my preference. You know, I'm going right. to jazz it up, you know. Right. But if that's what you want, hey, oh, okay. it's guacamole once the avocado is smashed up. I ain't mad well, at you. Now, I'm curious. You said something earlier that you don't eat pork anymore, right? Right. right. Now, I'm just curious what made you make that transition or what that decision? I just made a decision not to eat pork. Um, I saw the video. I don't know if it's true. I saw the video with the Coca-Cola where they poured the Coca-Cola yeah. over the pork and it had like... Trachina worms. Yeah, some type of worms coming out of it. It's and I was like, that's weird. And, um, you know, it's just something that, you know, it's, it's high in fat content and everything. It's horrible. It's horrible. Sometimes, you know, after but we I, are in the South, so we, we you know, the people eat pulled sometimes. pork sandwich. You eat it no, sometimes. No, I won't. I've never even eaten sleepy. it. So. Well, no, that's not true, because what happened was I did used to eat it, and I didn't know I was eating it. I didn't, I didn't acknowledge that mm-hmm. I was eating it, but I used to go to Houston's, and I would get the Houston's veggie burger with the barbecue beans, because I thought the meat that was in the beans was like some kind of soy protein mm-hmm. or whatever. 
because I never read the description. A friend of mine let me taste his. And because he was eating a veggie burger, I thought the beans were vegetarian also. And so I tasted them. So like 10 years down the road, never looking at the menu, always going to Houston, get a veggie burger, barbecue beans. This waitress was like, I'm getting veg. I said, I'm going to get the veggie burger with the, the beans. And she goes, the barbecue beans? I was like, yep. She goes, are you vegetarian? I was like, no, but I like the veggie burger and I like vegetarian stuff. And she goes, well, you know, the beans have pork in them. I was mm. like, no, they don't. No, they don't. I was like, that is not true. She's like, yes, it is. I was like, no, it's not. Not today. So I ate it for another two years. And mm. then I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. That, that I don't have pork in it. It's got like little pieces of pork in it. Okay. That's so, you know. I don't know. It's You know, it's always temptation out here. Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't know what I'm going to do this summer when I pull up to that cookout and those spare ribs and baby back ribs. Are you can get beef life. ribs. Yeah. <sighs> What I can't. The same. It, it's not the same. Yeah. See, but not when I same. ate meat, I used same. to eat beef same. ribs, though. And Somebody I thought understand. they were awesome. Yeah. It, it's, no, not it's, the not same. The same. it's not the same. Like, the barbecue sauce on the ribs, the baby back Beef ribs. ribs. Nah, are, nah, I'm nah, telling nah, you, brisket? Nah. Oh, I love brisket. But See, that's what I'm saying. You know I need what? that rib. I want to ask this is a side uh, question. Because it's a lot of uh, these reality TV shows and everything. Yeah. Will we see you on a cooking reality show? You know what? Everybody just keeps speaking it into existence. Um, my friend shared a post. I was on, I was in a newspaper article the other day with Voyage ATL. That's what it was. That's okay, what it was. yeah. And I, I posted it on Facebook, and it got several reposts. One of my friends was like, "Man, you're gonna end up one day on the cooking channel." And so many of my friends just keep saying, "One day, man, you're gonna end up on a show." I think you will. That's speaking it into existence. I, I, I'm a firm believer that. Even sometimes when you may not be able to see it, other people see things in you that you can't see in yourself. Yeah. And so they speak life into it. And, you know, I speak life into things as well. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, I, the, I guess, I remember what I was going to ask you about was going into your inspiration. What inspires you or who has inspired you um, in your journey? Who has inspired me has just been family, friends, um, people who sometimes when I get discouraged, uh, keep letting me know, hey, man, you have, like, a really great product and service. Yeah. Just keep going with it. Mm-hmm. Um, the late rapper, uh, Nipsey Hussle, I don't yeah. know if you're all familiar with him. Yeah. Definitely. His his music, uh, the words he spoke in his interview were very, always um, very inspirational. Yeah. He spoke very intelligently. So those are just some things. Um, God also inspired me. Absolutely. Me, me too. Um, the word of, of God, you know, things that you can find. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all out there are biblical and, you know, religious, but <laughs> the things that are said in the Bible also, you know, yeah. just about having faith, those are words of encouragement, I believe. Well, I think a large part of our audience um, are people of faith. And I don't know if you knew yeah. this or not, but uh, Minister Marty over here, he's a pastor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, on, on, on the weekends. He's a- <laughs> It was only on the weekend. You were too funny. <laughs> no, but he's straight up is like with a robe, yeah. a congregation, pulpit, yeah, like for real. The thing, yeah. And the whole baptisms and everything. Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You want to know? Do you do that? <laughs> when I have to. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah, that's the weekend. He drank the communion juice, though. He did. <laughs> you ever thought about just leaving somebody down there for thirty seconds too long? No. <laughs> the ones that I really don't like. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that's uh, and awesome. I, and Lord ain't finished with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> you silly. He's gonna <laughs> drown him. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's awesome to hear you're a man of faith because, you know, I think in today's society, people, you know, they 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 love God. They they want to have a relationship mm-hmm. with God. Or, but people are starting to shy away from talking about their faith because they, that you're being put in a pigeonhole. But I yes. want more and more people to talk about their faith, not from a religious aspect of it, from a, from a relationship aspect of it. You know, and I always joke with Marty and say, well, you know, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Yeah. But I, that I really am, you know, because. I believe that, you know, God has a plan for all of us, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. and yeah. just because somebody's walk is different from your walk does not mean that their walk is not valid, you know? Exactly. exactly. So I, and I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I just say if you, whoever your higher being is, spend time with them. Yeah. You know, and I'd say yes. at least, yeah, I'll put like this and, and I'll tell you why in a second. Yeah. At least 14 minutes a day. Yeah. And, I, and I'll say like this, if, if I gave you. One thousand four hundred and forty dollars every single day. What would you do with it? You know, but now you can't save. I would it and cover you your can't... payroll. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but you can't save it and you can't roll it over to the next day. Right. You know, it's like really, what would you do with it? Yeah. The concept is you have 
have 1,440 minutes every day mm. that you can't get back. Yeah. You know, what do you invest that time in? And 10% of that is 14 minutes that you can spend with wow. your higher being. Wow. You know, every day that you, you can't get that back. So if, even if it is working on my payroll, you can work, you know, put some <laughs> of those minutes in working on that That's payroll right. check, right. you know, Absolutely. or like if it, if it's, um, you know, your child's education, yeah. you know, now you can put some time in helping little dumb Ricky, you know, right. study at night, right. you know, in the sense right. of putting in that time for yeah. the grades, you know, yeah. but in the sense, put in that extra time with your higher being, because people say all the time, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Right. Okay, now what do you do with that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Right. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Do you pray? Right. Do you uh, pray? Do you meditate? You know, do you when, when volunteer? Do usually, you... I, I, I feel like that's a um, uncommitted relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a relationship well, with I'm no rules. Cause, I'm, I, I don't know if you're trying to say something, but I am very committed. Oh, you I'm know not, that. Okay. Yeah, you. to your husband. I'm saying. To I'm committed to, to the, my Lord and Savior. I'm committed to God. I'm, I'm committed right. to all of that. And right. I was reading, you know, whether it's. God or whatever, you know, you commit uh, to. Mm -hmm. We often say that we love it. And I was reading where love is not an expression, but love is actually an act. It's an action. Yep. That's it's right. It's an action. So if you do have something that you believe in, you have to act on it. And you have that's to right. act on it by following up with it and spending yeah. time with it. That's right. Spend time with your higher power. In these last few minutes, how has faith played a role in your life? Yeah, that is that is a great question. Um, I know, that's is, why I asked yeah. it. I'm good faith like that. Faith has played a role <laughs> in my life because really I believe as an entrepreneurship, your faith is constantly tested. And, yeah. you know, mm. you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And, you know, with having faith, you know, that substance, we all want to get towards the light. Yeah. And if you have faith, the substance is the substance. It's like the little flashes. Yeah, it's the evidence. It's the evidence. That it's going to happen. Those little flashes are the evidence that those things will happen. So you just have to seriously have faith that it will happen. Yep. And whoever you believe in will show you small flashes of light to That's keep right. you motivated. That's right. And you'll eventually get towards the sun. How yeah. has your faith been tested in your business? My faith has been tested several times. Um, I've cooked amazing food before. Thought it would sell. And yeah. it really didn't. Yeah. And I'm like, dang, I must suck. No. <laughs> you know, like, man, like nobody is really, you know, yeah. nobody supported me or, you know, no one wants to fool with me. But then, you know, maybe a week later, yeah, I'll go out and I'll do another event and people just are really gravitating towards it. So that'll remind me, hey, man, don't give up. Like, That's right. that'll be that little flash of light. Like, it's still going to work. You'll Absolutely. still get towards this Absolutely. big, you know, the end. That's awesome. And it is going to work and it is already working. That's like I yeah, said, you know, yeah. people are still talking about the food that you prepared at my birthday. And that's what was so great about us running into each other because I'm so inspired by what you do because you're a young person doing this. I mean, it ain't like you 50. You're not 50 years old. No, right? no, okay. No. I was going to say you might be younger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm loving what you're doing because you're a Thank young you. person out Thank there you. following your dreams and making it happen. Once again, how can people get in contact with you? Yep. Again, you can get in contact with me via email at writeontime.ga at gmail.com. You can get in contact with me through Instagram at writeontime.ga or via cell phone at 706-296-6572. I love it. And it is, I love it. Your business is called Right On Time. Right On Time. That's yeah. right. Just that means you sure. be on time, right? Right. Right. <laughs> Always <laughs> on time. <laughs> And Donnie, how can they get in contact with us again? They can reach us at DonnieJonesLive at gmail.com. That's Donnie, D-O-N-I, Jones, J-O-N-E-S, live, L-I-V-E, at gmail.com. It has been a pleasure yes. to have you on the show, Thank Jarmel. You all. And as always, Marty, yes, I love I'm you. loving you, too. I'm loving you. I'm loving you, too. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And you loving, have a lovely, Loving you. No, 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 no. Let's just go. Let's, let's just go. Let's just go. You know, I, you know, it, right, I know. I, I called them into existence. But you guys, have a great week. Love on somebody. Be kind to someone. Enjoy your life and follow your dreams.